Yes, I grew up on a farm much like this one. When I was a kid, my, my parents grew tobacco. And um, our summers were uh, all about uh, tobacco production, tobacco harvest, barning tobacco, taking the tobacco to market. I grew up like 45 minutes from the beach, but had never been to the beach until I was like in fifth grade. <laughs> because that's what we did during the summer was tobacco. And um, I didn't really think of our farm as diversified at that time, but it was just diversified in kind of a, a different way. My mom um, raised chickens and sold eggs and she raised peacocks and I don't know what she did with those, but they they went away. Um, and um, my dad always kind of had some kind of, I guess, side hustle in, in some way. And then, uh, and we had some pigs wallowing around in the mud in the backyard, although I'm not, I don't think that they were really, I think they may have been for our personal consumption. Um, and then in the, I guess, early 80s, uh, my dad really kind of diversified and he started growing hogs and cotton and corn and soybeans and wheat and um, and and then eventually sorghum and I think it's important you know most most people who do not live in rural America don't understand uh, everything that it takes to uh, to farm and I think that unfortunately uh, farmers are people with few words and so they, they don't often get the opportunity to speak for themselves um, and to have have their story be one that people understand but I just part of what I want people to know is how resourceful and smart and hardworking and um, diligent you have to be to produce anything on a farm um, and it's very rare that someone just grows pigs or they just grow cattle or they just grow cotton um, because it takes a lot of different uh, crops and commodities to make it work. And farmers are not villains. I think lots of times farmers get villainized for um, things that go wrong on the plate. And I can assure you that that's the last, that's definitely the last thing that's happening.